20th century. Emerging crossroads of Latin culture, big money, and cocaine's major port of entry into the United States. At age 10, George Valdez stepped off a plane onto Florida soil for the first time from Cuba. Well, the first business that I went to see was called La Puerta del Sol. It's just a small shopping center. It doesn't look the, like much. I start to do the books for them, and I get, start to get close to them. Because when I told them that I worked for the government, I told them I knew how to open foreign bank accounts. And they told me straight out that they were drug dealers. And suddenly, they began to ask me to handle their drug operations in the United States. Because I was young, I was bright in their eyes, and at the same time, I had a very clean record. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, and I didn't use drugs. Who would suspect that that young kid that was put through school at the University of Miami by the Federal Reserve Bank is a drug dealer? Little did I know that this little rinky-dinky grocery store would be the original front for what one day would become the Medellin drug cartel importing 95% of all the cocaine that came into America. George became the playboy. I was looking for love in the wrong avenues, a uh, trend he followed for many years. It's almost ironic because when I was in the drug business and I was at the epitome of my power, people used to come to me and say, George, how are you doing? And I used to say to them, horrible, those that were intimate with me. I knew that there had to be more to life than just being born, suffering, and dying. So I began to find that through uh, academia, and I didn't. I tried to find it in possession, and I had a million dollars worth of cars, and I was still empty, and more miserable, and more disenchanted. I hired this guy to come teach me karate. Every morning, he wanted to learn. He wanted to get the black belt as fast as he could. So we started teaching, and he started becoming receptive, started getting better and better. And it, well, the relationship was working out. And never did I realize in my uh, wildest dreams that just a few months later that the feds would come in. Drug enforcement agents, customs agents, FBI agents, they're all involved, IRS agents. Completely confiscate everything and take him off. But they go after him with, a, with a, a, a zeal that is second to none. He wasn't going to get away. The judge in Macon, Georgia, who had sentenced George to the maximum he could give him, which was 15 years, to think that he would grant the relief of, of reducing the sentence to time served so that George could actually get out of jail. If you had asked me the likelihood of that happening, I would have told you to go buy a lottery ticket because your odds are a lot better.